pimp, nigga, gone, brush your shoulders <laughs> off. Ladies is pimps too. Ahem. One of the strangest things I'm finding is that white intellectuals and academics, college students, etc., romanticize minorities to the point of parody. Oh, you're so lucky. I bet it's great living in a multi ethnic neighborhood. It has such color, such flavor. The food must be great. It's what America should be about a melting pot. How about let's get real? These pampered, rich, white, intellectual kids who've never seen violence in their life. How would they deal with living in some minority neighborhood? And by minority neighborhood, I don't mean Asian. When was the last time these guys saw riced out cars with a sound system probably worth more than what the car was bought for? Though you can't be too sure the car was bought or the sound system was bought. Blasting ghetto bass, throwing fried chicken bones on your lawn. Or La Precious and her crew throwing down to sweet baby girl in her posse. When their cars are stolen and trashed. When the adorable neighborhood kids put 2x4s with nails under their tires. How would they react when the 16 year old girl down the street is kidnapped, raped, and dumped two houses down? Would they think it's colorful then? Probably. Look at all the awesome shit that happens here. Wow, this is reality. This is real life, man. I feel so alive. Eventually, they'll be wanting to move back to their own place. Boring. Suburb. Safe. There's no fried chicken joints, check cashing places, pawn shops, rice car, auto shops, and discount liquor stores on every corner. They can lose out on the flavor, but they can always read about it in the paper and on the local news. The way life should be. All ideas expressed in this video can also be applied to the romanticization of peasant life. The romanticization of the environment living bare without human technology. The romanticization of the environment bare living without human technology. How about those environmentalists can't follow their pastoral historical ideal and then come back crying when they find out that they like technology. And many of my viewers are not adults, but teenagers. Teenagers that live in suburbs that live with affluent families that have no idea what their generations did to get to their middle class. Teenagers that are often unhappy with their lives for trivial reasons. Unhappy with their neighborhood because it's boring. Nothing ever happens. Do you know what? Your suburb is boring. All the cool shit happens down the street in the other neighborhood. Here's some things to know. No one yells louder at 8 a.m. than a Sri Lankan grandmother who can't speak English. Black people don't know how to cross the street. While watching police investigate a rape down the street is entertaining, it tends to bring down property values. Vietnam vets occasionally go on psychotropics and dress as Boy Scouts and harass women at the grocery store, and they never, ever, ever cut their lawns. Some say it reminds them of Nam. Turning your car's as hazard lights on excuses you from blocking a lane of traffic so you can talk to your boo. If you're gay, it'd probably be better if you don't leave the house. Because in some cases, in the phrase gay bashing, bashing is not a metaphor. Wanna make your own mace or pepper spray, and never leave the house without that or a concealed knife or gun. In some jurisdictions, it's illegal to hold and conceal it because it's classified as a possible dangerous weapon. Like in Washington, D.C., or the U.K. Classified by whom, I ask again? Right, the politicians who make the laws. The, uh, the rich white guys I was referring to today. And I love how they call them the projects. Like, it's a school project. You have to finish. There's, like, a deadline. If you procrastinate, you have to stay up all night the day before to finish it, or else you get a bad grade. Feeling like a pimp, nigga gone, brush your shoulders off.